Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a Shining Sarcophagus deck profile post um, the Infinite Forbidden. Um, I've only just recently acquired the cards from Infinite Forbidden, so that's the Dark Magician support um, for the deck. And I've been uh, playtesting the deck a whole heap and I'm pretty happy with the list um, as it stands currently. I'm still opting to Blind Second. Now the, the Dark Magician uh, monster kind of gives you something more to do going first, but um, I'm playing it still more as a, a go second, OTK if you can, but otherwise you establish a, a board good enough to just win from there. Now obviously this is not a meta deck, but still certainly for locals is something that, you know, you could give your opponent to run for their money. Uh, it's obviously still very sim very simple game style, but um, a lot of fun, I think. Uh, so we've got two of the Gandora, and I've been slowly working on acquiring QCR, so I got my second Gandora just recently. Uh, I'm playing two of the Dark Magician. My second is coming in the mail. Um, I'm playing two. The other thing, you, you could toss up playing one Dark Magician and three Gandora, um, just because I think Gandora obviously is just the, the better card, especially going second. So that's something you could consider. Um, I'm still just on two and two, but um, yeah, three Gendor is something that's definitely crossing my mind and uh, an option. Uh, we're then playing three Gadget Trio, and my second QCR is on its way as well. And I'm just playing the one Magician Zero. Um, I'm not playing the Ties That Bind in the main deck with the, the Swordsman. That's in the side deck at the moment, but this is still just something you can summon off of Gandora to try and kind of OTK. So between Zero, Dark Magician, and Gandora, you can generally pull 8,000 damage, um, depending. Uh, it, that's not 100% successful, but you, you can do a pretty good job. Um, then we're playing three of the Shining Sarcophagus. Have not touched the spells yet in terms of acquiring QCRs. Uh, so that's probably the more expensive job. But uh, And then three Future Silence, of course, because they're just all consistency. Um, I'm playing two Turn Silence. I think the card is just phenomenal. And if you've got everything, that's what you're grabbing. And I am playing one Secrets of Dark Magic. I have considered, like, the, 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 there's, you would think that there's an argument maybe to play something as simple as, like, Thousand Knives or the Dark Magic Attack. But the reality is, is if you are um, getting to this point where you get to set a Spell Trap off the Dark Magician guy, um, it means you've resolved Gandora's Board Wipe. And so there's not, not a lot you can set with the Dark Magician that's actually worth setting. So it's probably just Secrets of Dark Magic. Just gives you easy access to Dragoon um, on like you're on your follow-up. Um, also hard drawing secrets of dark magic is not terrible. Um, yeah, so it's that's why we're playing that. Then the rest of the deck is non-engine. I've actually opted to take out the branded stuff. I mean going second, like, it's it's okay, but um, just trialing some other options. So we're still on three extravagance, um, because we don't really touch the extra deck all too often. And then I'm playing some hand traps now, so kind of taking a note out of Tenpai's book because we are trying to blind second. So we've got three Perulia, three Shifter. Um, playing one Magnema as well, just because grabbing Gandora is pretty good. Um, and then hand trap wise, we're on three impermanence too. So that's all the hand traps. And then we're playing a small number of um, board breakers as well. So kind of, you know, um, diversifying our assets, if you will. Uh, so I'm playing three Super Poly. Um, this allows you to make Dragoon quite nicely as well. So going second as well, if you're like, like off, often it's just you know, pushing for lethal um, to just turn the two, turning Gandora and Dark Magician into something. But yeah, Super Poly allows you to kind of go for lethal as well if your opponent has no monsters. Um, but sometimes it can be good for outing things. Uh, and then on three talents, three Book of Eclipse. I just think it's a pretty crazy card. And then one called by the Grave. Um, so that is the main deck. As I said, I'm pretty happy with it uh, at the moment. Then for the extra deck, it's going to obviously look uh, varied for extravagance, but it's uh, three Dragoon, just because it's the only real thing that we're, we're summoning with the Dark Magician. I'm playing one Dark Magician Dragon Knight. It obviously does protect Shining Sarcophagus, which is not terrible. So in, in a pinch, this could be the thing you make if you don't banish it off extravagance. Uh, then for Super Poly, we're just going three Garuda, three Mud Dragon. Um, the, the extra deck, you could you could play with this, and I'm certainly open to whatever suggestions anyone in the comments wants to make as well. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, just six of the best two poly targets here. 
and then I'm playing an Earth Golem, a Borrelode Furious, and a Dragos Depelia just to try and like catch other matchups um, as well. And then it's one Typhon and one SP. Uh, they come up very occasionally as well. Um, and then the, the current side deck, and it will, it's not, the side deck is not perfect at the moment, but still just uh, a work in progress. Uh, as I said, we did have the, the Zero Swordsman and the Ties That Bind. Uh, this is just something for going first, but then the, the other issue is this, is that generally speaking, when you are, and I'll show it in some combos as well when we do some test hands, but um, generally speaking, you can either search out the Dark Magician play. So if you open access to like the Gandora board wipe or whatever, um, often you want to use your searches to get to Dark Magician, which allows you to then set up Dragoon as an interruption going first. Um, but then otherwise, if you don't prioritize that, you could prioritize Ties That Bind um, and get access to the two zeros. So it is it is kind of much of a muchness um, whether you go for that. It's it's more just, you could just throw these in as just extra cards going first because there's cards in your deck that you're happy to not have in there. Um, if you were going first, like for example, like the Molchami could come out. Um, I'm playing three Dark Ruler and three Evenly. Um, these are just obviously more matchup dependent. These don't allow you to win the game. Um, but I've just opted to... A Dark Ruler was something that I was maining for the longest time. Um, just because we're going blind second. Um, but just because we do have access to more damage with the Dark Magician, I've decided to side it. Um, as well, just like, this is only really for locals anyway. So um, I've replaced it with Imperm just to kind of make those... Like make the boards a bit simpler with Imperm, Molchami, and um, Shifter as far as your hand traps go. Um, and then the the last seven cards, I mean, I, and this is because we're blinding second. We if if we decide that we want to go first, depending on what we think the you know if if this is uh, important for the matchup, but we could just play a lot of floodgates. So Macrocosmos, D Barrier, Anti Spell, right? There's there's lots of things we can side out um, and just back up our engine with with the the floodgates of like the non fun cards. Um, but the side deck could be changed, of course. Like this is just it, the side deck was more just uh, um, it, it's always changing. Um, but I'll do a couple of test stands just to show kind of how it all works, and you can see that consistency and things like that. Okay, so we'll do a couple of test stands. Obviously, this is going second, so you've just got to kind of bear with it a little bit. Um, but looking at what we have, we've got tactics, Magnum, shining sarcophagus, called by the grave, um, Perulia. Um, in terms of like playing this out. Obviously, our opponent is setting up a board. Um, we can throw off the Perulia at any point. Um, let's just say, for argument's sake, we only draw one card off it. Um, we'll just just to keep things uh, not ridiculous. Like, like Perulia is most of the time going to draw you one, maybe like one to two cards, um, depending on matchup. But we'll just we'll just draw one for the sake of this. Um, and we'll assume, I'm thinking about the meta is as well, there's a very high chance that Magnemite is something that we're going to be able to throw out in the end phase or at some point to disrupt a play so um, we'll put that out there as well and you know use its effect so then going into our turn we resolve the magnemite we're just grabbing gandora uh, which is good because it just means our, our engine here is a bit more solid and we get to draw for turn so imperm obviously imperm now conflicts with magnemite but it is what it is um, so from here we kind of just have to play into the board and see how talents goes but um just to kind of show i guess how the like the, the combo kind of works um we could go for shining sarcophagus first we could use it to grab now in this in this example so this is because we've already got gandora and shining sarcophagus um what we could do is we could go straight for um it just depends. And just looking at like the hand, we could go for turn silence immediately. We don't really get much value out of just grabbing gadget and then having that get interrupted. I mean, if we want to try and bait talents, we could try and like, depending on what the, the field looks like, um, we could grab gadget trio first and then let it get interrupted so that we could talents, or we could just go straight for turn silence. And again, we, depending, it, obviously it's all dependent, but we can throw down Gendora at any point and go for turn silence to make sure the Gandora goes through. Um, Magma would get destroyed uh, and banished, and as well as obviously, and this, this just means that everything goes through. And this is when we could go for Gadget Trio now, if we want to, just to get more bodies on field, or we just summon out the zero. 
as well. Um, so that's one option. So that just, that just means our plate is insulated because we have turned silence to just help the Gandora get through, which depending, it's obviously going to be yeah, board dependent. We also have called by to push things through as well, depending on what the interruptions are. The other kind of line of play is instead of using sarcophagus to grab turn silence, we, we, I mean, we could use it to grab something like the Dark Magician, um, summon both it and Gandora out, and then use Gandora, wipe the Magnum out, the Dark Magician gets wiped as well. Um, then Gandora brings out zero, and then the Dark Magician returns and sets the spell. So this play, of course, doesn't get turn silence, but it does mean that, you know, if we don't OTK, which we weren't looking like we were going to, it means that we've actually set up something on the next turn. And so depending on how things play out, between Imperm, the called by, this is Dragoon, the spell negate, there's a few things going on to help us try and, I guess, win the turn on the next, or win the game on the next turn. Uh, so that's just, that's one example of kind of how you could play it out. Um, of, course, of course, testing, you know, blind second is is always going to be tricky. Uh, especially when you're playing like reactionary cards like Talents as opposed to just raw board breakers. Uh, it's more because Gandora just breaks boards as well. So we've got Shifter and Perulia. Talents, Shifter, Engine would be good. And <laughs> that's the worst kind of engine. Um, so obviously we would throw out Shifter and Perulia. Um, my logic would be just to throw Shifter out first and then the Perulia gets banished just because it's more attack on Gandora. Let's say Perulia lets us draw a card from a normal summon and we're just uh, in big trouble here. Does Perulia's... Oh, we get to drop a turn into Magma, so not ideal. Had Perulia drawn us a second card, we're still, still in a bad spot. So, I mean, our only hope, I guess, is that... And that's on the top of the deck. But our only hope is, you know, Magma, Banner Shifter. See if they if they interrupt with interrupt Magma, then obviously we could go Talents to draw two cards. We know we're getting an Eclipse and... Well, then we finally got to engine, but that would be a lot that has to go uh, right for that to get there. Um, so we probably still lose even after shifting and you know using more charming, but we could maybe stall out to get to that shining sarcophagus, but definitely dependent on our opponent's board. Okay, we've got Super Poly, Future Silence, Shifter, Gadget Trio, Imperm. So more than likely we'd be throwing these two out at some point. We'd be drawing for turn into a shifter, which is fine. It's just a discard for super poly. If, I mean, through shifter imperm, I, I don't know how far they're necessarily getting, but um, this is definitely enough engine to get where we want to be. It would be gadget trio for sarcophagus for dark magician or turn silence, future silence for Gandora as well. So we're looking to piece together sarcophagus, Gandora, dark magician or sarcophagus, Gandora, and probably because we've gone shift to imperm, we, we might not need turn silence. It could just be that we are able to, and, and with super volley as well, we probably actually do definitely go for the, well, I'll show it here as well. Um, so we've used shifter, everything's under shifter at the moment. Um, you can go future silence at any point to grab a monster. So we'll grab Gandora. It's just the better one to have first. Um, gadget trio for Shining Sarcophagus. Shining Sarcophagus for Dark Magician. And then it'll just be a matter of summoning both. Um, going for the board wipe. So the board is uh, wiped. And we get to summon out the Silent Magician Zero. It's gained a number of levels. So obviously it's definitely gaining two. Minimum from us, but then obviously whatever the opponent had also. Um, then the Dark Magician would activate to return and set the secrets of Dark Magic. It's not going to be used, but it just, I mean, it just gets the card out of the deck as well. Um, and then attack-wise, so you know, we're on three Banish cards, but our opponent would obviously have whatever they made through Imperm Shifter, which might not be massive. So Gandora might not be huge. Um, the Silent Magician Zero at the minimum is out at 2,000. Um, so that's 2,000, 4,500, 600, but probably more. Um, and then we could, of course, Super Poly. We lose the Shifter and then these 
would become Dragoon. Now, in this case, yes, we don't have a card in hand to actually use the Dragoon interruption, but obviously it's still a bit of a house to deal with. And then we've got our follow-up with Shining Sarcophagus. Um, but obviously if that was not going to be enough for lethal, we'd probably just, we wouldn't use it at all because that was just for damage. That was just for, for lethal, depending on if we needed it. Otherwise we just use Secrets of Dark Magic anyway, and then keep the cards in hand for Dragoon Negate. So we had Spell Negate, Dragoon Negate. Um, if we'd held the Super Poly, Shining Sarcophagus can pitch it to um, send a special summon monster to the graveyard, or that was someone from the graveyard. Um, that's the effect that it very rarely comes up, but still has it. Uh, we've got Talents, Extravagance, Perulia, Turn Silence, Perulia. Okay, so this is obviously nice. We get to throw a double Perulia. Uh, again, we'll just say that we draw one card, which is obviously two cards in this example. I mean, we've got double Imperm to stop whatever our opponent's doing if, you know, we get to that. Uh, then we get to draw for turn. Uh, so we're still not actually playing the game at this point. Um, we'd be going for Extravagance. I'm not going to worry about shuffling and punishing cards here, but we'll draw into another imperm and an extravagance and uh yet we cry because we have no plays even after drawing a bunch of guns so that is unfortunate we'll do one more and leave it there i know it's not the strongest deck of course but i just i don't know i just find it very enjoyable and um, Gandora in particular is just one of my favorite monsters of all time. Uh, there's a Gandora in the OCG that we still haven't gotten after a, a large number of years. It'd be great to have it. Um, we've got Prulia, Trio, Shifter, Extravagance, and Super Poly. So this is fantastic. Um, obviously we're dropping Shifter and Perulia, drawing one to two cards depending. Um, not a good draw, zero of course, but now we're drawing for turn. So we've got enough engine to push through whatever our opponent has, probably, but we get to extra as well for two more cards, and that's pretty awesome. So obviously double ups of the Gadget Trio is not ideal, but because everything's under Shifter, um, the Gendora is going to have a lot more attack, and we can obviously make Dragoon with this if we need to, um, but we've got Turn Silence to insula insulate the plays. We don't get to summon the zero off of the Gendora here, but we can summon out the second Dark Magician for more damage, um, and we just get stuck with this in hand. So, and th this is another reason why I've opted to play the uh, Zero and Ties that Bind in the side deck, um, because because we're playing like a lower power level deck in general, um, we don't really want to play these cards that are bricks. Um, we'd rather just, especially when you don't often get to Ties that Bind anyway. Um, if you're like, as you would see, like when we're prioritizing the searches, like in this hand. Um, we do get a summon off Gandora, so because we opened this, we could actually summon zero if it was in deck. But the Gadget Trio search is being prioritized for um, Shining Sarcophagus, right? And then Shining, Sarc Shining Sarcophagus is going add to add any one card. We already have Turn Silence, we already have Gandora, but in this situation, we would rather grab Dragoon, um, Dragoon Dark Magician, just because we already have Super Poly, and it's just the stronger play. Now, if we had everything so if we already had access to dark magician as well on top of that sure that's when we can grab this but there's there's a few other things we'd rather grab first is is just the way that i see it so we can side it if we open the absolute stones then sure um if i was playing maybe like prosperity if we weren't going second maybe as well that would be because you get you have you see more cards to try and piece all of the engine together but I don't think it's worth it, but um, otherwise, that's going to be it for this one. Um, like I said, it's a really fun deck, and it's going to look really fantastic, all in QCR. Probably not the best uh, return on investment, because the deck itself is not strong, but um, I don't know. I'm addicted. It's crazy. I, I really enjoy it, so that's what I'm slowly plugging away at as I can. But otherwise, that's it for this one, and I will catch you in the next one.